Okay, great. This is at random with Alec Perturpi and Trevor Dugan, which is myself. And we're here for our third recorded episode right. since we've switched format to this podcast version rather than on the airwaves. Right, definitely, yeah. What was it, a few years ago we did the airwaves, now we're on to podcast recording and yes. basically just a pit, cartoon picture or pictures of us. And yes, welcome to the 2010s, everybody. Podcast. Right. Podcast. <laughs> uh, but, uh. So yeah, how, how was your week? <laughs> <laughs> this is truly going to be an at random, at random episode because I had, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we always live up to the name. We always just do our uh, seamless transitions. Right. We, we never prepare for the thing. We just talk, and that's kind of how the show came to be. We would meet up, and we would talk, and we'd be like, you know, we ought to record this. Right. And that's <laughs> just got to record these crazy talking points. <laughs> that's that we where get. it goes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, those Bills, man, I don't know. what I didn't think they I just, it's like, of course they got that lucky to win that game on Sunday. <laughs> like, right, <laughs> yes. Basically a... Uh, um, now, as an employee, you work there, but you're in a unique situation where... Um, in working there, you don't actually see the game because you're, I don't get to you're see an most usher, of it, right. but you're stationed like in the back of the seats, so you don't actually see the action. Right, right? exactly. I uh, won't say where because if someone actually does listen to this and find me, it'll be really creepy and awkward. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I, I, I work for the builder. I've been working there since 2009. And uh, if you can hear, I don't know if you can, but she's in another room. My dog, Pina, is in another <laughs> oh, room. Geez. But she's still barking, and I don't know if you can... I don't know what it is about you, man. She hates you. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> but if it makes you feel any better, she hates all guys, so it doesn't... It's okay. okay. It makes you feel any better. That's good. But what I was going to ask is, in years past, because how many years have you been doing this? Since two, since 2009. All right, so, so since 2009, you've seen years. some bad years yeah. and some okay years. Never any good years, of course. No, of course not. <laughs> but is there something different about there this year? There would be a 17-year playoff drought if exactly, there was any yeah. good years. I know that you can't see the field during the game. I know right. that you can't even really see the crowd during the game. You let people into the luxury suite area type mm-hmm, of right. something. But is there just like an energy you can feel this year that's different from years past? Because as a, a patron or even just a tailgater, I've been to one game. I've uber driven people to and from uh, every home game so mm-hmm. far. And there is just like a special kind of electricity like almost – Wow, this is for real. Because there's always like excitement early in the year, but right. that excitement quickly goes to pessimism. Pessimism, <laughs> like, yeah, well, uh, why did we think they were going to be good? Of course, they're not right. going to be good. This year, maybe to me, there's something a little bit dif- different. Even uh, different. just driving the fans around, it's like people are actually almost afraid to be as excited as they are. So there's like this silent tension of excitement. And for you as an usher, do you feel that, or does this kind of feel the same as? every other year well it's funny because they're better there's definitely something different about this team i wouldn't say it's like obvious but there's definitely something different about them and i think a lot of people are just very very nervous to um say oh yeah we're gonna be good or oh you know what i mean like they're afraid to buy in because my dad's always famous saying is yeah i'm afraid to buy in because that's the year they're going to lose. And then when I don't buy in, that's the year they're going to win. <laughs> so he's right. on. So, so I feel like that I get that from a lot of the fans. Like, yeah, we've seen this all before. I mean, how many years have, and this, during this drought, have we been, you know, like five and two? Yeah, five, one and we two, talked two, in a previous episode. We've seen this movie way too many times oh, yeah. to not know the ending. We were there. What, our last year of high school was the Trent Edwards year where they right. were really good. And then our junior year of college was the Fitzpatrick year where they were really good. Now it's like, come, all right, year we know really what's good. happening. Here comes the all is lost moment uh, right. of this tie rod year here is just going to be the same as them. But we keep waiting for that moment. Hasn't happened yet. And no. hopefully we're going to still be in that tension until mathematically they're, Gone. they're right. Yeah, exactly. Or well, they're in yeah. the playoffs mathematically because we're so used to hearing mathematical elimination in like November. And right. it would be really nice to hear – mathematics in a different context yeah like how how many games do we have to win to uh actually like make the playoffs and not have to worry about um you know like uh right yeah do we have a (laughs) magic number to make the playoffs not a magic number games or three games or something to get eliminated right Right. exactly yeah we're always our famous always in the hunt uh 
graphics, even though we don't feel in the hunt, are technically a record. Yeah, it's always now. funny to hear to see on like a national sports media, like an ESPN or something, go like, "Well, here's the ones that are in the hunt," and Buffalo's like, "What? That's really up there." Really? That's record wise, right? Yeah, that's it. Really? It's just record. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. Us up there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then we we all know it's like, oh, it's just record. It's not like they actually think the Bills have a chance to make the playoffs. But yeah, right. I think a lot of people are just afraid to um to say like, Oh yeah, we're definitely good this year because I mean we've had this movie last year too. I mean we were four and two last year. Yeah, a lot of people are shocked to know that. They were talking about that on a lot of the media outlets this morning that yeah, they're four and two, but if you even people on the own team, they were asking Tyrod, uh, the quarterback and a few other players, Do you remember when we were four and two last year? They were like, Wait, seriously? We were four <laughs> and two last exactly. year? Exactly. Because they went 0-2, and, and then they won four in a row. So it was even more, right. more so impressive 4-2. and two. Yeah, it was, uh, it was just different. It, it right. snuck up on them differently. And, and I they, think if they lose this game, these they got two games next week. They got one Sunday against Oakland. And then they and how is Oakland this year? Do you think they're going to show? <sighs> you know, Derek Carr is just an interesting story because – Two weeks ago, he broke his back, and yet he still. And now, he, I mean, EJ played one game, which is ironic. EJ Manning oh, played wow. a game, and then um, well, there's a few former Bills on that team. Yeah, well, one of them's not playing. Marshawn got yeah, suspended. Yeah, it's your boy, Marshawn. Uh, my, my boy. Yeah, that was the one who was your like, yeah. least favorite player, basically. Is, uh, which is almost too bad because it would have been funny if he did not have a good game and the fans got to boo him. But now it's some. Um, because the yeah, last time he played was that. Seattle, and he was really right. good in Seattle, so it was like. Yeah, that was in his prime when he actually right. was was real good. Right. So, where are we going with this? I totally kind of forgot. Oh, we were four and two last year. So it was like everyone's kind of. I think, like I said, I think everyone's just like nervous to say, "Yeah, we're good." Because, right. That's the. It's like a silent. I tension. would say these next two games are very crucial. If they split, they're five and three. If they win both, they're six and two. Which I don't know if the Bills have been six and two in the drought. Like I would have to go back and look. I mean, they weren't six and two in the year they were in the hunt against when they played the Steelers in that last game because hmm. they were like they won six or seven games in a row to make that push, and then the last game obviously they lost to the Steelers third stringers. But um, huh. so like I don't think we've ever been six and two. Wow! So that would Imagine be something. That. that would be um, that'd be something. Yeah, that'd be something interesting to to be. And then if like I said, if, well, if you lose both games, I mean. Now you're four and five, and nobody believes in you. I mean, this is crucial. If the Bills want people to believe in them, they have to either split or win both. Because if they lose both, they're everybody I mean, will if be in the mode. Oakland, you lose to Oakland last week seems like nothing. It's like, oh, you got lucky. That's what happened. Right. Like you didn't. You didn't win that game because you were good, and you have a shot. You won because you were lucky. And yeah. they. I mean, I watched the end of the game. Uh, they were. <laughs> I mean, you could throw. Th you throw in a guy who's no one's ever heard of as their top wide receiver. Um, but I don't see. I can't even name him. That's how unknown he is. Mm. He has first hundred yard receiving game of the year too for the Bills. So it's like, I mean, yeah. I, I think if you beat Oakland, and then Thursday night you beat the Jets, I think people will start taking you seriously. And I'll start. I'll start believing. Yeah. Uh, Hi, unbelieving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it's I feel. Like yeah, every, love with people me. are high on believing it. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a euphoric experience. I am believing. Ladies and gentlemen, first time we have sung on this song. Because we did a f our first recording, I think we sung, but it wasn't our very, our, like, not our very first. Oh, our not demo? Not our first one. Not our, yeah, our demo. Our underground. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Calling it a demo. I like that. Yeah, it was our, our, it was our demo. Our underground tape. years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think we sang for sure on that. But, uh, yeah, first time on recorded YouTube. Uh, nice. <laughs> so you think we're ever going to put up these social media pages as we keep talking about? <laughs> like, I think I, I'm very. We'll put it up when, when a fan requests us. Right. To. <laughs> yeah. Well, t in total, we have two videos up we have like 18 views and only three of them are mine so oh, okay. and the only reason i did that not to be weird and listen to myself because i can just do that by talking <laughs> and right. my wife my wife says i'm annoying so and i agree with her so um <laughs> but yeah so, she real? <laughs> i hope not <laughs> but she's never flat out told me hey alec you're annoying so i guess that'd be a good thing but um no it's just to uh like quality checks but yeah so i mean someone's listening whether they're listening for a long time or just a few minutes and saying these guys are idiots. I mean, pff, who cares? Is, you know what? This is like what I wanted to do coming out of college. Like I didn't think of podcasting per se, but like 
wanting to make something, produce something, and then like edit it, and then produ- I'm sorry, I did that out of order, but like <laughs> act out something. Like either video, voice, or right, something, perform it, edit yeah. it, and then produce it. You know, that's what I always wanted to do. And I mean, I kind of do that my full time job, but not every day. Like I haven't had a video in like three weeks. Fingers crossed. Let's just keep it that way. I mean, it's so much <laughs> easier just not just to go to the office every day. But um, <laughs> so it's like it's nice to like every week. Okay, okay, Wednesday, Trevor's coming over. Or I'm going over there, and we're gonna right. record. And then the next night, I import it and edit it and all that kind of stuff. So, and it's actually funny. <laughs> It was too late because it was already up at that point, but I didn't uh, edit out the end of our video. Like, I edited out the front pretty good, but the end, I totally whiffed. We were talking, I don't know, we were just talking about something, but it wasn't. So it was like, we did our little sign off and everything like that, and then we're like, and then we just kept talking, like, oh, we got to film the opening and all that kind of stuff, yada, 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 which will happen. Probably not this week, but we will get an opening. And so, so it's not just. Hey, welcome to At Random. It's like, oh, I want, I want something. Like, we didn't say anything <laughs> offensive, did we? <laughs> yeah, we dropped a lot of F bombs. Right, I was gonna say we probably we dropped said N bombs, some... L F bombs. Oh god, no, yeah, <laughs> we're probably saying some controversial opinion. <laughs> hey, people are watching all the way to the end, right? <laughs> yeah, that'd be yeah. a way to prove it. At least, just, yeah, that'd be a way to drop, prove it. Just drop them and say it at the end, just so you know, this was a test to see. Yeah, I wonder if, you if actually... anyone ever does that, and I'm sure it's probably a common thing. Like they're not getting anywhere, so then all of a sudden they're like, you know what, Let's I'm just gonna do controversy. Do? Yeah. <laughs> I think my wall stopped peeing. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, there was for a, everyone who does, that came out as well. Yeah, there's there. a, it, well, it's not a, let's not overdo it because <laughs> if someone, if a certain someone's listening to this, I'm going to be in the doghouse. Let's just say that. There's a little small leak in the back here, right behind all this producing equipment, which, by the way, ironically, has not hit any electrical. And I get, I get back here. I'm setting up for tonight, and I, I hear this like, j- 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 I hear this little dripping noise. I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. Like, and I'm thinking, oh, it's outside. It's pouring outside, you know. But um, and then I look over in the corner. I see a little puddle of water. I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's all right. It's normal. It's a bit. It's a it's a non it's a non sealed basement minus this wall that I'm looking at. So oh, I mean, okay. it, I mean, it's sealed, but it's not like I mean, this is professionally done. So I mean, this is, this uh, is yeah. Been, these three walls have been here since the house was built. I this see. one was put in because of we had to fix the foundation when the place was originally bought. Right. Which you was a nice a... thing that the uh, realtor decided to leave out. But anyway, it's ah. not, not the problem. But so with this house, you did a cool classic thing. You took, you know, a fixer upper, as they say, and you right. made it a fine. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I won't say amounts because I, I was told I shouldn't and I don't really want to. But right, yeah, um, yeah, I'm not it, saying it went, say it, amounts. I'm just saying. It went, tell... it, I, I increased the value of this house almost three, four times the value. Wow. That I Good for at. you, man. That's so cool. it was a lot I'm... of work. My dad. Yeah, I know. You'll get him as a sponsor because he's right, a real yeah. <laughs> South Buffalo Realty is a, is my dad's company. Uh, he works with a partner, uh, Mark Bookhagen, and I remember Bookhagen. I know his name's Bookhagen. Oh my god! Right, I, I know. I feel he, like an idiot for not knowing these people. Mark Bookhagen. But yeah, your father has always been like very good at at that kind of. He's stuff. done this, this since I was does. a kid. Yeah, this is what he does. And honestly, if I didn't have my dad, I probably would not have went ahead with this project <laughs> because They're when i up. bought it i was like okay it's either gonna be one of three things it's gonna be a place for me and melanie to live until we find our house okay until we find a house for us to live in right two it's either gonna it's gonna be a rental property which you can charge a buttload because it i own the other lot next to me too as part oh, of this i didn't realize that so okay that whole grass over there when you pull in that's i own that too or it could be a um, a sell. I mean, we put it up and you sell, like you, a flip, as they like to say in the business, a flip, or the house flip. Right. That's so it's thing. like it could be, and then it still could be one. It still could be two of those things. I mean, obviously we're living in it right now, mm. and it still could be like a flip or uh, or we sell it when we move or we rent it when we move. Because obviously, I mean, it is a nice house to start. It's a starter home. That's what this. Yeah, it's a fine it's starter a, house. It's a it's fine a... starter house, but it, it you, I don't think it can sustain. Um, uh, like a bigger family if we decide to go that route or and i mean eventually we're gonna get sick of being in such a small place like okay. i would love to have a place with an attic a second floor of uh, like uh, floors you know like i don't know you've been to my par- you've been to my parents house i've been to of your like those kind of houses that okay. have like an upstairs a downstairs something a built for like a, a family yeah right. exactly and um so eventually we're gonna want to probably move out of, and it's okay. like, and this then all this but is here to do that what with. what part was the most fun to improve like what room or whatever do you remember having i mean what, what the was the best most... of the worst is that what you're going yeah with? or yeah what was the most challenging like most I'm just, challenging I'm, was I'm, definitely I'm... removing the ceilings 
Oh, and basically, huh. basically when I bought the place, it was been in foreclosure for like two years. Like it was foreclosed. Upon. Oh, so there's just it nobody was vacant. here. It was nobody huh. was here. The funny thing was though, um, it, it was vacant, but they had redone the electric and redone the windows. So those two were already oh, done, which are two, handy. which are two things that are pretty like expensive in the house building process. So, but I will say probably the most challenging was getting the ceilings and old walls down. Because what we did was we basically just um, just redid everything except there, there's one room that we didn't redo because it was the nicest. Now it's the shittiest room because we redid everything oh, else to make that, it nice. That's the one thing to that's just it. the constant. Yeah, it was the nicest room when I bought the place. It's the shittiest room after okay. I fixed it up. Cool. But uh, yeah, so the ceilings because there was all that, all the um, now what is it called? Insulation was all in the ceiling. So yeah, when you pulled down the ceiling, nothing was holding it. So it all oh, came out all right the cotton in your face. candy just. The Drew. cotton candy, that's a good way to put it, yeah. Yeah, so that taking all the walls down and the ceiling down, that was definitely – because what I did was, which is a mistake, and if you're listening, take advice from somebody who did this. Do it in sections. Don't do it all at once. Because mm. what I did was I pulled the whole ceiling down of all the rooms at oh, once. Oh, jeez. So, so it's all – So there was no so room. So there was only. no room to move, and w- the only way to get it so it was compacted enough so I wasn't wasting space in the trash bags was to shop back it. <laughs> which was cool until the shop vac got full. It took four full shop vacs to fill one garbage can. Oh, my god! And it was a process. And you I know me. Sure. I'm like the laziest dude in the world. <laughs> so to have to, like, continuously do the same thing over and over. Thank God the Sabres were playing. Or I would have never gotten that done. Because at least I could be like, all right, I'm going to work the whole Sabres games. I'll get as much done as possible. Oh, okay. Just and then a, when the Sabres game is over. A nice distraction. I hope I wish to escape. The, yeah, exactly. Because I'd have the radio on and I'd be right. doing that. You didn't have to think about the Right. And my were... dad really didn't join or help me until that was all done. Ah, so really, because so honestly, was... what is I know how to demo. That's how, that's my carpentry okay. <laughs> abilities is to demo. You're I'm, a good destroyer. I'm a good destroyer. I'm not a good builder. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did learn how to fix a hole in drywall recently, so oh, that was pretty cool. good for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm fascinated. I, I have no t- – me or my father have no talents like you and your father in terms of renovating, woodworking, working with tools on right. our hands and stuff. You guys are good at that stuff, and I've always – I love well, those yes, HD I'm, TV I'm, stuff. I, I, I'm, well, you would think I would be since I went to all these houses, but I'm the only – I'm an expert at two things. Okay. Holding the flashlight and getting yelled at. <laughs> okay, so those are the two things in my life that I am exactly – I stole that from John Caparulo again – Another another John Cap reference two weeks in a row. Yeah, Can you, someone keep a counter going. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that'll be that'll just be like, like have edit. his head like pop up. Yeah, again. no, like ready come from the just top. Like, <laughs> and like he smi- <laughs> like him coming up normal, and then yeah. like do the smile. Okay. All right. So we got the edit now. <laughs> yeah, get the graphics department. Right. Yeah. On that. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at the graphics department. Oh well, that's <laughs> nice though, that because this is a fine house. I just I love hearing about. Uh, property that's yeah not great and then was made great even not just a personal property but like you know a rust belt city like buffalo detroit cleveland and that we're all having like little renaissances and for years we grew up well whoa that's a pretty looking building on the outside but yeah. it's all boarded up there's nothing happening now it's all becoming really luxurious it's become legit. offices yeah, or it's lofts not, and apartments right. and stuff i mean i work in one of those buildings i work in the ellicott square building which oh, is right yeah the which, largest what was it? The largest skyscraper largest for a long time. Office building for a really long time. Yeah, and that's right. that Up until is Chicago, a really. Chicago, I think, when the Chicago Tower, whatever one's in there, is it Sears? In Chicago? No, well, I don't think. Well, Sears Tower, it's now called the Willis Tower, was for a long time the tallest tower in America. No, no, I'm saying until that one was built. I oh. think, I think, no, it was. I think it wasn't the everyone. Sears, but it was another another tower. skyscraper okay. that was built there. And then, of course, yeah. New York made the Empire State, and that. Right, that right, and then the World Trades and then everything like that, Right, which are back up and running. That's kind of hard. Yeah. To like, I remember, oh, my God, fifth grade. I was in fifth grade because I only okay. ran – you weren't there. You were in – you came in seventh grade, but right, we, we were – Right, we weren't um, in the same school yet, but you're talking about September 11. 11th, of yeah, course. Right. Ten, what is it now? It's been 15 years? In 16, 7 – wait, 2001, 17, so it'll be 16 years. Yes. Wow, that's wow. crazy. Yeah, it's, that is crazy. But – um. So yeah, they they got the buildings up. I was I went. My sister lived in New York, worked in New York City after she graduated. Oh man, I wish right. I she was there for a little while. She was worked at the Waldorf Astoria. So, wow, uh, that's amazing. Talk about some experience. What right neighborhood did she live in? Oh, dude, I wish I could tell you. Do you remember what borough at least? Uh, I know there was a big bridge really close to her, but that doesn't help anything. Was she right in Manhattan though? No, no, I don't think oh, she was in. She was in. Honestly, I should ask her next week. Probably should, Brooklyn. I'm going to see her next night. Oh, okay. I'm, or tomorrow because I'm watching. 
my niece and nephew tomorrow night. Okay. Oh, so I alone. guess probably so the kids are okay. Not Brooklyn alone. or Queens then. That's cool. <laughs> probably. I just, yeah. But um, but yeah. So she lived there for nine months, and I visited her. We went to a Knicks game. That was pretty cool. Oh, neat. I got to go to right, MSG. Right so in the garden. Cool. Yeah, I've took a, taken a tour of MSG. And it was this was 2006 when the comedian Dane Cook was really big, and yeah. he was doing a concert later that night. But he was doing a sound check while we were getting a tour. Oh, that's so really cool. So I saw him just kind of go test one two test test <laughs> test. Oh, those lights are too bright. I feel like I'm getting abducted. And like everybody <laughs> laughed, and he looked, and he's like, "Oh, there's a tour going on. Hi, tour, come to my show." <laughs> and of course, I thought that's what. Isn't I that was, on Netflix? Isn't that somewhere? Like, isn't that recorded it might be, somewhere? Yeah. I was gonna say because I remember because he was. A, Cause it's in the middle, right? Like they're yeah, in the middle. Yeah, it was a really neat, neat stage. It was just like in the shape of this famous hand thing, the shocker, the like sho- the, the, two, yeah. two. The, your index okay, I do your know what it's. Finger, a, your pinky up. I thought it was. I thought it was this. Something. It's some kind of hand thing. Where's our glass? Yeah. Where's so, the glass? Yeah. Where's the piece of glass where's that we can look at? Piece of glass research tool. But whatever Dane Cook's hand thing he does, it was just a little stage right in the middle, and it was like a, with that on yeah, it. Yeah. Tiny, I think I know what you're talking about because I remember it's. Um. Yeah. Because I've watched that. Yeah. It was cool. He's like because he was talking about. Island going to his his dad taking him to a farm or something. Oh yeah, else. Benson's Animal Farm. <laughs> yeah. Benson's Animal Farm. But of course, but that 2006, he was like huge at that time. He could obviously uh, a one single comedian could sell out Madison Square Garden. That's a big deal. Well, it's him. So it was just cool Kevin to, Hart. Like there's there's some people who have a few only, comics only who have are sold good at selling out. Right. Arenas, Bruce Springsteen yeah. did it many days in right. a row. Well, a concert's different. Yeah, but yeah. like for a stand up comedian, it's a big deal because they don't. And I guess Dane Cook. Now that I've I've kind of learned something. New right. Yeah. I don't. Know too many other stand-ups that you would think Gabriel fill. Iglesias would have been able to sell it out. He would, yeah. Popularity. During in his prime, he would, he is very I transcendent. On. I think he's really, I really enjoyed. It. He was, yeah. You know, I still of, like him. Well, what was I'm trying to think? I probably was college when I had discovered Gabriel. Iglesias. When you got really into, Iglesias. oh my god, and he was well. Now it's like, um, now he's lost so much weight. So the oh, fluffy, really? tor- oh yeah, he's down to. He's oh, I gotta slim. look up a picture. He, of this he, guy. He's not well. You gotta look for a comparison though, because he's still big. Like he's, no, he's. I mean. You gotta compare. You can't just say oh, you're gonna if you're gonna if you look up a current picture of Gabriel Iglesias right now, you're gonna be like, really? You you consider him small? But compared to what he used to be, oh my god! Like he went from fluffy to husky. Like that's how like he. he oh, does he acknowledge that in his? Yeah, because uh... well, he talks about it all the time. He says like, um, he's like diabetes can kill you. Like he's going through all this stuff. Oh, uh, like he, he kind of realized he was oh, not yeah. in a good. Right, and he really, okay. I mean, honestly, he really wasn't. Like, he was Well, yeah, huge. he's pretty much normal size he's now. Normal like, size for him, A normal, yeah. like, kind of guy on the chubby side, but he's not, like, crazy big. He used to be so big, it looked like he couldn't put his arms down. Right, exactly. You know, he was, like, a big dude. Now he's, like, normal guy who kind of got a, a gut. Can't put my you know? arms down. Right, yeah, he was, like, the kid from the Christmas <laughs> story. I can't put my arms down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so but, it's, like... Yeah, and hopefully that furnace isn't picked up. I got a dog and a furnace going. I mean, <laughs> maybe. I mean, we got the equipment here, but your house is definitely quiet. Yeah, my house is a little quiet. I mean, you, your roommates aren't yap yap yapping or going the right, whole time. Yep. But I'm looking at the monitor and looking at our bars things going, and if we're not talking, they're not going. So I'm thinking it's background noise, which will be good, which is good in audio. Trust me. But if we were doing a uh, uh, a deposition, it'd be big trouble. <laughs> we would definitely want to be doing the deposition down in a basement. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, those things are nerve-wracking. Like, I couldn't imagine being in one of those. Like, obviously, I can't go into details about what I've seen ever or what I've heard, but, like, the generality of it is You'll just nerve-wracking. You cases, right? Right, exactly. Like, there's the most, the most, um, and for those of you who don't know, maybe haven't watched the other episodes, I'm a videographer by trade, and I work for Metchell and Associates, which is a court reporting agency in Buffalo, New York. For those of you who don't know court reporting is, what it, what we do is we create a record for the courts so that the lawyers can um, do discovery and figure out what the case is. Like, obviously, you talk to the plaintiff, you talk to the defendant or defendants, figure out their side of the stories, and then you do non-parties, which are not which have no bearing on or no have no um, care about the result. And then you, and then they go to trial or they settle. It's just it's a basic setup for every single. Um, situation and I, i'm just sitting there like obviously i'm i have no pressure i have no pressure on me i know what i'm doing i mean I, I mean i have pressure but like i know what i'm doing i know my job i do it the same way i always said so it's never like it's more of a it's got more of a routine now it's not nerve-wracking anymore 
So, but I couldn't imagine being on the other side of the camera with the microphone on and having to answer all these questions. I would be the worst witness ever. I forget <laughs> everything. Like some, like today, yesterday. Oh, no, and by the way, I was at the Sabres game last night, so we can definitely get into oh, that. Oh, very good. But so that's why I didn't text you right away when you texted me like, "Oh, we're recording." I totally forgot that it was Tuesday and we were that's recording okay. tomorrow. Yeah, we're here so, now. Yeah, and uh, so it's like I forget like stuff that people tell me the morning that morning. I couldn't yeah. imagine trying to remember like stuff from years ago because some of these cases are like year like something oh, that wow. happens years ago. Like and they, you got to be a witness for something you witnessed many years. Witnessed ago? or were a part of because I do do- the videotape ones are mostly of people who either it's too expensive for them to show up in court or they can't show up in court. Like it's two oh. different situations, or or intimidation. That's the third aspect of it. Sometimes the people who hire you are just like eh, whatever. <laughs> They don't need to record the testimony, but they're like, we want to intimidate the, like, oh, the, intimidate wow. because, like, oh, now that you know. I bet, yeah, getting a camera stuck in your face with this major league, like, people get, get BS people, bullshit people, lie to people, but, like, right. lawyers lying to you, that's major league heat right there. When you're being cross-examined, like, that must be, even if you're telling the Cross truth. Cross-examinations are the craziest. I right. Mean, even you're getting you, questioned by the lawyer who hired, well, whoever, whatever lawyer is questioning you, first is usually the person that is hiring you for the case or whatever ah. so they're the first to get to question you that cross-examination oh my god like they they try to tear you to shreds I like they do. totally take down your your uh qual like your quality of your witness or your testimony everything i couldn't imagine i would freak the frick out that's why i don't get in car accidents like it's one of the reasons <laughs> i mean other than like the injuries you know the insurances i did it's like I don't right i work in cases. claims at a right you work at geico so you're so on I, I you're kinda, on the other side you, you i kind of have to do mini depositions every time somebody was in an accident i have to cross reference them cross examine them just a little bit just to make sure there's nothing wrong right going on, nothing suspicious have you about ever the accident. i mean have you ever been told that you might be called to Talk about a call? A little, yeah. Sometimes if, if people deny it that bad or if it's that complicated, there's the possibility somebody at my lower level position, like the first call. First call, first, first unit, contact. First contact of I've claims. seen that. Yeah, I've, I've done those depositions right. where it's the first contact of. Uh, to do that. But usually things right. get settled. Uh, oh, they definitely. Yeah, those car accidents with the guy going out. That gets yeah. up. And, so, I mean, and we started at some, we started somewhere with this, like being nervous or something. I don't know. <laughs> But I mean, you you're being speaking of being nervous. You used to do or still do voice acting. Oh uh, yeah, once every in a once in a while. I, I mean, do you that. do you do you ever get nervous doing? I mean, that's kind of a laid off, laid back kind of. It, especially it's job different than money. any other acting because there's the least amount of audience there. Usually, it's just you and one producer, maybe the pers- the copywriter who wrote the commercial. Right. So there's the least amount of audience. So voice acting, and you're not showing your face. So voice acting, you can really cut loose and be. You can show, and there's no dress code, of course. You can wear your damn sweatpants to the (laughs) the as Chris Rock. I gotta get sweatpants and get full man that chick. (laughs) Right, (laughs) yeah. During the Oscars, Chris Chris Rock was like, "People say voice acting is hard. It ain't hard. They can make me look like a zebra. They make my man Eddie Murphy look like a donkey. We show up in our sweatpants and we get four million dollars." (laughs) <laughs> yeah. But yeah. All you got to say, 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 time to go to the store. Hey, time to go to the store. Four million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and he did, really did well in the Madag- it was a Madagascar yep, he's he talking plays about. The, yeah, Zebra. a lot of great voice actors. Play, Marty. Play the oh, shit. Animal. Yeah, and ben Owen Stiller. Wilson was the lion, right? No, Ben Stiller was the lion. Ben Stiller was the lion. Yep. Was Owen Wilson in that at all? I don't know. The guy from Friends, um, David Schwimmer, was, yeah, and was, the, the, oh, was the, the neurotic the giraffe. And then... Some famous black actor. Zoo transfer. Was the, no, no, I have an appointment with Dr. Goldman in the morning. Prescriptions need to be yeah. filled, and I am not going HMO. Right, he's one of those really neurotic <laughs> Right, guys, yeah. Which is kind of what he, he basically is always typecast as that guy. Except in the O.J. Simpson miniseries, he plays uh, Robert Kardashian. And oh, And wow. that was really, that was like the first serious role I ever see David Schwimmer <laughs> do. Speaking of O.J. And he was good. Yes. Yeah, it's funny because Jim Carrey was the same way. Like, he did... I want to say 23 or something with number, the 23. number 23. He did that yeah. movie and that freaked the fuck out of me. Like, I've never a, seen Jim Carrey serious. Like right, that. yeah. It was, you know, and it, it was, was like, like almost a borderline horror movie right. kind of thing. Really surreal. And then another uh, Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind was like a really depressing. Like That sounds uh, like a depressing yeah, movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so speaking oh about people who were in a great relationship, him and I think Kate Winslet is the 
the girl, but then they purposely, they have their memories erased because it's too, after they break up, because it's too painful to remember how close they once were and how they had to break up. But then they meet each other again, and they don't know why they have this connection. Something like that, but it's really depressing. I think I remember, yeah. And that would suck to be like, say, like, uh, us with our significant others. Right. Mm. And be like, what if you forgot completely? Like, your brain totally forgot. Yeah. Like, that's why it's so sad with, like, um, Alzheimer's and those kind of just brain diseases. Right. It's like I couldn't imagine going to like obviously I haven't like nobody thank thank God I don't know if you but thank God nobody in my family has been affected by this disease yet. Um yet oh my god I'm like predicting it. But no all my my grandparents are passed away so they would have been the only ones that would have maybe succumbed to that but they none of them did. Um and it's like I couldn't imagine if I walked in and talked to my dad and my dad had no idea who I was. He's like, "Oh, who are you?" It's like I, I mean, I look like him. That's one thing. And then it's like, it would just be so sad. Like, and you're just talking about, like, they they went to forget the other. But it's like, I don't know if I could do it. Like, mm-hmm. like that's an experience, you know? I mean, like, it, whether it was bad or good, it's like, that's part of what makes you you. Like, you, you there's nothing in, there's nothing in the world that can make, I mean, obviously, there, pro, there isn't yet. But I'm sure they're trying to develop it because people will be like, oh, I want to forget that day at work because it's like, and then, like, it's almost like it's um, kind of scary how you can pick and choose edit your life like that if that was possible which to a certain extent it kind of is but it's not really mainstream and you can't do it you would have to do it in a very broad way right like because selectively it's like have things erased from your mind it's kind of like um if you um if you go back in time and you try to change something that you think is bad but like it the, sets because you change else. it sets a chain of motion. Right, you don't, don't kill a butterfly because it or was right. that and it's yeah, like the butterfly effect. Right, yeah. I was gonna say that that's a movie. Yeah, too. in, in ter- terms, there's another guy, memories. Ashton Kutcher, who went from yeah, he tried super to do fine a, to serious to a horror movie. But anyways, right. go ahead, sorry. Oh, I was gonna say yeah. In your own mind, I, I really understood what you, I really understand what you mean by that. Like you go back in time and try to stop something from happening. Butterfly effect, it could rearrange everything in history. On a more personal level, if you go back in your mind and erase something from your memory, you don't know what subconsciously you gained from that memory. Right. So maybe it was bad for you at the time, but you could have learned something that influenced you later in life. Like, like you know not to go after a certain type of girl yeah. because that'll happen, but right, you don't remember exactly. that, so you were yeah. like, all right, I'm going to go after, oh, she's Exactly, that, yeah, exact, so it can wreak you know. just as much havoc. So I guess the kind of the moral of whatever story that is is... <laughs> this uh, movie can, that totally came out of nowhere. You but. can always take the good from the bad like it's it's good everybody's gonna wish oh man i wish that didn't happen but in the end just accept it and whatever you learn from it whatever you can take from it it's better off than trying to actually erase it because you don't know what else yeah, you're erasing because exactly. you learned something from it right exactly and it's like you know, like you said take the bad take the good out of the bad take silver line the cl- every clouds have a silver lining what's that from Stuart Little or something. I know it's a saying, but still, Stuart oh. Little like <laughs> takes it to the. It's uh, funny okay. to think of the people in Stuart Little. Like now that speaking of at random, by the way, sure. like this <laughs> should like about... we should have a, we should have a total <laughs> we should have a graphic going like every time that something totally random comes up. For, that's random. For like seg- yeah, how many like segues, a segue right? How many topics? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of like we got the guy from House is the dad. Right. The guy from Legend of or League of Their Own is the mom. Oh like yeah, she's the yeah Gina queen of, Davis. Yeah, and then the kid is what was he in the vampire? Jonathan Lithnicki. Yeah, he was a big. He was in that in that uh, the Tom Cruise movie. Jerry like, Maguire. Yeah, Jerry Maguire. Yeah, he was in Jerry Maguire. Yeah, he was big when he was a kid. He was pretty big. And he then, had a lot of good. Roles. I want to say, does Michael J. Fox play the mouse? Yep, Michael J. Fox is so, the voice of the mouse, yeah. and then Nathan Lane is the voice of the cat. There you go. So it's like it's just so funny to think like what these what movies people have done because like um. There's people who have, are like known for doing so many movies. Like Nicolas Cage is known for like so many different things, and none of them really good. But <laughs> except for like maybe, maybe National Treasure. But everyone right. Like, that's rips an exciting him. movie. And yeah. he, believe it or not, he won an Oscar for Leaving Las Vegas. But it's funny; most people don't associate him with that. People are like, "Wait, what? I never even heard." And of then that. you say like um, Ghost Rider or something. Like right. That. And then for yeah, since he won Which that is, in like the nineties, since then after he won his Oscar, his career has just been a bunch of crazy dumb movies. Yeah, mostly. Was, like there's people who are known for doing so much, and then there's people who are like known for one thing. Like the famous example that I know of, because me and Melanie love watching the show, is called Full. There's Full House. Cameron, can I don't even know her full name. Like, see, this is how bad it is. I don't even mm-hmm. know her full name, but the DJ, the actress oh, who plays can, DJ. Uh, 
Candace Cameron. Candace Cameron. Okay, yeah. I know it's, I know it's two first names. I just didn't know which order and whatever. The mm. But like, she's only. I'm sorry, I only know her from Full House. I don't know. Any, right, I don't think. She, I know she's done a bunch of other things. Oh, I don't know really? anything else she's done. Yeah, because she just had that one of those faces where like her face was so synonymous with. DJ. Yeah, with being the older sister, DJ on Full House, that she couldn't do anything else. So now she finally is getting work. That's as, Fuller House. As Fuller House. <laughs> That's which her I have that... not. Have you watched Fuller House? I have watched the first two seasons entirely and bit of beginning to end. The third season that just came out recently, like half of it came out recently, and the other half is going to come out in December, oh. which I guess is kind of smart. It's like marketing and everything like that okay. but i have seen so and they, honestly they released that less than a year later and the only reason i remember last year they uh, re- released the second season around december is that right no. yeah because yeah. i remember i was on an amtrak train going from from new york city back to to buffalo and there was this little kid on the train who was like throwing a tantrum because he wanted to watch fuller the house. new season. he was like the new season of fuller house came out today millennials and I need to everybody watch it. millennials everybody get right. ready well this for is it. like the child of a millennial this kid he was like a little kid yeah well those are the new millennials those are, yeah. right the gen z i guess the gen, gen z y, maybe? yeah I don't gen- know. All I know is that I am just uh, – back to the – before we go on to the next random topic. But, like, yeah, so there's always actors who are – actresses who are known for, like, doing so many great things. Like, I I think of Johnny Depp as one that does a lot of Very really versatile, good – Very versatile, yeah. Sleepy – was he in Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow? Sleepy Hollow one. was one of his uh, Sweeney Todd. I love Sweeney Todd. Like, oh, yeah. I absolutely love – Great musical. And it's kind of funny how – though. Oh, what's the woman's name? She plays Harry Potter. She's in Harry Potter. She's in Sweeney Todd. Um, oh man, where's my, where's my glass? Oh no. Yeah. I know who you're, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Like I can picture her, but I can't think of her name. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, oh who's she playing? She's Harry got Potter. like three names. Oh uh, yeah. Helen Bonham Carter. Helen Bonham Carter. Okay. So that's right. Yeah. So she's, she's great. in that too. Tim Burton like will, ne- will refuse to, oh yeah. Cause I think she's married to Tim Burton. Well, that makes sense. Well, that would make she's sense. In every if single that's true. One of Tim Burton's movies. Fact check. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to fact check well, that right the, now. Another graphic, Alec. Make fact check. Yeah. Every time we say something that's <laughs> That very might be incorrect. a little off, but, um, and it's ironically, um, Candace or Cameron, what's her name? Cameron Candace or Candace Cameron? Candace Cameron. She's married to a hockey player too, so it's kind of like yeah, well, famous marriages. But anyways, but like, there's always people who are known for doing so many good things, and there's people who are known for doing one really good thing, and then everything else is shit. Mm. <laughs> so it's but yeah, like, Helen Bonham Carter, very versatile. She's done a lot of stuff. Although it seems be, like she's typecast as like the same person. The, cra- the, the crazy, crazy lady, hair, yeah. the crazy. I think the, love and the, like not the love. Obviously, right. Harry Potter's there was no love interest, but. I mean, I guess you could say with Voldemort, she was, like, really into Voldemort, even though Voldemort was probably not interested. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine but, Voldemort yeah. on Tinder? <laughs> Ooh, Dark Lord! Right. But right yeah, she right. plays... <laughs> and it's, except, I, can think of, I don't do Tinder, people. I don't know which way is the good I can one. think of maybe one movie where she's not that crazy, and that's the King's Speech. She plays Queen Elizabeth, so I... So like she, she's not that over the top. Right, but. yeah. Well, yeah, and that one, she can't have black hair and be gothic. Right, she, Queen Elizabeth. Exactly, yeah. Which was brought <laughs> two weeks in a row about Queen Elizabeth, by the way. Or, oh, yeah, we talked about the royal family. <laughs> because you week. thought she was done. Uh, because she was in fif- the 50s. She was. Er, back check. No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> yeah, she, like, you didn't know. Like, I didn't know either. Like, don't think. I'm not, we, I'm not we all knowing here. For how long Queen Elizabeth. Has right, been she's in been power. there for presidents. She's been there for, like, so many presidents. Like, yeah, since pictures. the 50s, yeah. Right. So it's like, yeah, so it's bring up Queen Elizabeth two weeks in a row. So we got to have John Cap and Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, are, yeah they're, we The need common to threads here among <laughs> at random oh, man. are the, uh, the unrandomest things are Queen Elizabeth and John Cap, which are pretty damn random in and of yep. themselves. Mm-hmm. So. But King's Speech was a good movie. It was cool to see Jeffrey Rush. When I think of Jeffrey Rush, I think of Captain Barbosa. Captain Barbosa. But then he just yeah. places normal, like, oh, I'm an old British man, like, self in Well, he did that King's in the speech. fourth movie of Car- Caribbean, right? Didn't he do – there wasn't he a – like, he was a pirate, obviously, towards the end, but, like, he was a British – Soldier, because, right? Like, he was. He, he lived he sold a more out or no. Right? Yeah. He quit being a pirate and he, he joined like just the Armada. to join. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I Which mean, it, like seeing him out of his pirate makeup and pirate persona, just as a man yeah. from the 1940s instead is of like the in, 1840s. Is he? Is he like in anything? Like, what else is he in that would be that I wouldn't know? Um. Yeah. Mostly a lot of British movies. British, uh, Shakespeare okay. in Love. I don't know if you ever seen that. No. Oh, that's a pretty good one. Uh, yeah, Captain Barbosa, The King's Speech. Right now, one of the coolest things he's in is the Albert Einstein show, Genius. He's playing mm. young Einstein. 
Um, he's playing young Einstein? Yeah, well, not like young. He's playing old, like Einstein during like the heart of his career, oh, not okay. like really old. Like, I was going to say, when you say young Einstein, I don't think of Jeffrey Rush as young. Um, a lot of movies about like the and 40s, it's... like The Book Thief is about World War II right. and the Holocaust. And he, he... I'll never I'll never remember him for anything else but Captain Barbosa. Exa- yeah, exactly. Because he did exactly. such a good job in Captain... But he, right. he, it looks like he changed over the years, though. Like, like in the first three... I mean, obviously he's not in the second. He's not in the second one until the end. But like the right, first he three, has one line in the very end. So where beam ship? Yeah, I don't what know if happened that's... to me, ship? Then he, <laughs> <eats an laughs> then he bites the apple. Yeah, that he finally gets to that's eat. That's when I had braces. I would always quote him. I'd be like, as soon as I get off my braces, I'm having, having a whole a bushel of apples. Because he would always say, as soon as the curse is lifted, I'm having a whole bushel of apples. apples. <laughs> uh. Yeah, oh, well, that God. movie came out so long ago at this point. Right, well, the newest one came out. And Although the does, newest one just came out. And right. that, I actually, ironically, I really enjoyed it. I thought, like, obvi- like my thing about tr- trilogies is that they should just stick at trilogies. Unless there's another story to be told. Right, usually they're they just gotta, kinda, like, they're beating a dead horse. Well, yeah. and that's funny. Like, I, ring I, but these five it. movies, I don't think that. I enjoyed all five of them. I enjoy I all five parts, parts of them. Yeah, there's... But the sixth one, if there is one, is going to be kind of hard to believe because there's a major thing after, like, if for, sorry, spoiler, it's been out since the summer. Have you seen it? Yeah. Okay. So, spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen, if, if you don't want to know the ending to Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, and yes, I did forget what the title was, <laughs> sue me. Then and then don't then turn down your volume and wait about five minutes. I'll do something crazy to let you know that it, sure. I'm done talking about. It. So at the end of the movie, the premise was the um, Poseidon's or Trident um, right. is it Poseidon's Trident yeah. is what everyone's going after to lift right. all There's the curses. Duffing, yeah. Oh yeah. It, all the if it gets destroyed, it lifts all the curses on the sea. In the, in the sea. Yeah. Right. Which is interesting because like it t- that's how it ties in every other movie because every other movie is about some famous legend. Curse. Or you curse. got the Aztec Golden One. Right. You yeah. got um, Davy, Kraken, Davy Jones, yeah. and two and three. I guess you can go two and three. Right. Uh-huh. Four is about. Um, Blackbeard. Blackbeard and the, the Fountain of Youth. You have Fountain of Youth, right. right. So and all then that the, stuff just And then the fifth gets... one is about um, this Spanish captain. I can't think of his name right now. Who is, by the way, another good actor. Oh, uh, Javier Bardem. Yeah, yeah. That, was a, that was a fine performance. Yeah, he did a really, like, yeah. he did a really good job of playing the ca- the Spanish captain. I wish I knew the guy. I wish I knew the guy's name. This is why we call it at random, because we don't know shit. <laughs> Anyways, um, so at the end of the movie, they destroy that. Like That's part of the end of the movie. They destroy mm. that. So what's the sixth movie gonna be about? Right. Like they didn't do. I don't think they left a cliffhanger from what I can remember seeing the movie. I might. Have, I do have it upstairs, so I'm probably gonna end up watching it again. But like, I don't remember there being a cliffhanger for a sixth movie. And well, the one thing that they did. Oh, they did. Um, they did. Um, because one the the Turners. They right, did the, the Turner very family. The end of the third movie. What the thing is that Orlando Bloom, the guy who plays Will Turner and who plays Legolas in Lord of the Rings, he has to be captain of the Flying Dutchman, which is a ship. That like goes underwater, so he can never leave his life of being every a ten captain. years. He's got one. Yeah, every got captain, a day. He's got a land. day to go a day on shore a day and hang sea. out with his his wife. So kind of <laughs> hang a out, sad, right. yeah, sad marriage that they got to get everything in and once every ten years. But so he's just cursed <laughs> to be the captain of this ship right. for eternity with all these other like crazy like shark headed people, which they weren't stuff. after he got on board. Because the only reason they all changed was because um. Davy Jones refused to do his job. Basically, oh, so his if, job if the was captain the ne- captain of the flying. Job, du- they would become sea creatures. The yeah, the okay. captain of the flying Dutchman, which was Davy Jones originally. There, his job the is to yeah. to charter dead so people who died at sea to the other side oh, to the so to the now, Davy Jones locker, huh. which is why that's called that. Right. But he doesn't do that. Like he just doesn't do that job. And they're all huh. sitting there. Like just waiting. And they honestly. slowly are becoming more and, and more. And the more he doesn't do his it. job, he turned into the octopus. Uh, and okay. that's why he's the octopus, and that's why everyone on that ship was, was... partially a secret. Right. And okay. then when the heart got stabbed and Davy Jones went down to his own locker, um So okay, so now Orlando Bloom's job for like how to charter eternity, dead souls but, yeah, on anybody sea. Anybody who to dies the other side. on sea, he has to take them Correct. to heaven or hell or wherever they belong. Right. And but I don't what know what this means is because now that every curse is lifted, because what the the fifth movie is like, you destroy the trident, every curse is lifted, he no longer has that responsibility. So he right. comes 
goes back to Kira Knightley, his wife. Which nobody saw coming, by the way. In the movie theater, when I went to see it, nobody saw that coming. <laughs> like, nobody. Like, everyone thought it was just going to be the son and the father, like, meeting at some point and hugging and, like, right. oh, we're so happy. No right, one expected it, No one expected Kira Knightley. Cause, a or, big I'll tell you what. I'll tell you exactly what happened. And, by the way, oh, no, we're still talking about the ending. Still don't listen. Still do not listen. If you're listening, stop. Go away if you don't want the spoilers. So, basically, like, they do. They'd have that moment where they're um where they hug and they meet and everything like that. Mm. And then Orlando Bloom looks to his like looks to like he's looking at the camera but he looks like slightly off. Mm-hmm. And then everyone in the movie theater is like <gasps> And then they and then they see like off in the distance this red dress coming off and like coming Kira. up. And it's Kira Knightley. Kira, Knightley, right. Kira Knightley's character, um oh my God, Elizabeth Swan, Swan, Elizabeth Turner. Yeah. And, and everyone just went ballistic in the movie theater, like oh! Really? Wow. Like, they went nerdgasm. Like, that's what they call them. I guess them. so. <laughs> well, we're going to say, nerdgasm! Yeah. So, but yeah, it was just kind of funny that, like, because right. I didn't it... expect it either. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. They have, or they got Orlando Bloom somehow, because he wasn't in the uh-huh. fourth movie. I mean, it really didn't have a spot, and if you think about right. it. Right, no, I kind of like that, that they just wanted to focus on the main pirates. They didn't right. have that romantic they side had... story. Because personally, I think my least favorite one, though there are some cool parts, is the third one, because I think they focus too much on Orlando Bloom and, and Kira Knightley. Right. And that's why the movie is almost like four hours long. Oh, that yeah, the third movie the third of every series so seemed long. right. And, but yeah. it's, I've, I'm like I said, I, I that is the one movie series where my um, feeling about trilogies is like kind of miffed because it's okay. like I like all five of the movies. Hmm. It's just that usually you do a sixth. You don't stop at five right, unless you there's do five books. Number. Right. Yeah. Right. And. With all the curses being lifted, what do you do a story about? Right. But anyway, what we were going to explain is the cliffhanger was he's back in – him and Kira Knightley are back reunited on Earth. They're sleeping in a, a bed, and then all of a sudden Davy Jones himself, the octopus guy, mm-hmm. like walks into their room, and then Orlando Bloom like wakes up, and he's like, oh, shoot, I thought I saw something. She's like, no, I'll go back to bed. And he goes back to bed, but then the camera pans down to the floor, and the floor has all these wet – footprints mm-hmm. of davy jones so it's like is, so that's the cliff they're okay. teasing is davy jones back for revenge i guess i don't know uh, I, well, he should be thanking him if anything and well, why he's is dead he back? though right exactly he's dead, so though. i don't know so it's like i don't yeah i don't know if they really need to bang out beat out well, another. I'm, I'm actually although just... the one cool thing i liked is young johnny depp part of it was the whole it was like the adventures it was kind of an origin story of of captain jack sparrow they digitally made johnny depp look like he was in his early 20s which mm-hmm. is really cool I'm, I'm sure it was hard to do and they did all these flashbacks of his early days as a pirate how he first impressed some of his first captains he was just like some uh straggler kid who just kind of got on the ship they were giving him odd jobs and crap to do and they were like let's see what you do if you're in charge and in charge he does this awesome thing where he sinks captain salazar's boat which is the the ghost Spanish Armada yeah, so you pirate. Do, so you do know. <laughs> yeah. The guy actually just found Yeah, it Javier <laughs> Bardem. And um, he, he put the curse on. That's why Javier, the whole plot of the fifth one is Javier Bardem's ghost wants to kill Jack Sparrow because he was the one pirate who could beat Captain Salazar. Or that he did, yeah. Yeah, and he, he did, yeah. But They're that calling would be, it if, Salazar's Revenge, possibly. Like, this is the, oh, the... There's no green light on this movie yet, huh. but it would be called Pirates of the Caribbean, Salazar's Revenge. One, right. But he's dead, isn't he? Right, like, yeah. don't anybody die in these yeah, movies? Or get, yeah, like, can't you just uh, do it Jeffrey's Rush characters died in the first one. He came back in the second one. Exactly, yeah. Um, so it really lowers the stakes, because if anybody dies, it's not like, oh, my God, they died. It's, well, they'll be in the <laughs> seventh one. What the fuck was up the game? Oh, my God, they died. Oh, my God, they died. Oh, my God. No. And they're gone. It's just, they'll be in the seventh one. Right, they'll be in the, yeah. Know, be some I think after six, though, I think they're done. I think there's no... They're, you cannot well, beat know. that drum yeah, again. Because the way... then they got to go to seven, eight, nine. Like, you can't stop at seven unless you're Harry Potter, who's so you're, just, you're just very OCD about, like, there three. can't be, there no can be decibels of three or de- uh, three. whatever. Three. So you're basically three. Okay, we're done. We're done talking about Pirates of Caribbean. So Anyways. you're saying three is the only odd number you will accept. Well, yeah, think about it. Like, <laughs> think about any trilogy is three. I mean, do you Well, that's think... why it's called a trilogy. Shut your damn mouth. <laughs> The, you're like, saying the average movie series ought to be just three. Three, six, nine. Like, it ought to like end Star Wars is going, but I don't know. Like, see, Star Wars is another one where it's like, 
Well, they did they, it in threes. There they was did the it in three threes. original from the seventies right. and eighties, and then they had the Which three. It's so hard to believe that they were in the two thousands, right? And then now they're working on another three. But in between these, this other three trilogy that takes place after the ones from the seventies, they're going to have little like spinoffs and origin stories. Right. right. Well, they had they had the first, like you said the first three, and then the second three, and then they had the seventh movie right which is with ray and Rayleigh. right yeah and they had all that that's gonna be its own that's episode seven, seven. eight and nine right and they did between and they... seven eight and nine they're having spinoffs like they just did the rogue one spinoff which is had none of the real main characters as the stars it was <laughs> it was the what the rebels were doing that led up to like the moments before the original right. one and you gotta love how people like critics of it are like well it's funny how the uh the rogue one walkers were like more digitally advanced than the ones that I was like, no shit, the movies are made in the 70s. <laughs> right, yeah, you can't compare yeah. special effects from right, 1977 exactly. and 1980 to the 2010s. But <laughs> any smart person that went and saw that movie knew everybody you just got attached to was going to die. Because right, that's what that's they talk the about. Was and, about was that right. like, all these spies died. You know, Many Thothans died to bring us this information. You know, it was all about like this right. brave crew that they talked a lot about, but you never saw. And now this movie was finally you get to see this get to brave see them. crew Correct. that got the Death Star plan. Right, and it, it, the most ominous scene in that movie. Again, spoilers if you haven't seen it, but not how haven't you? It's been a year and a half. Very popular movie. Yeah. Right, was it was so quiet. The four guys were on the ship um, tunnel going towards the door. And all you hear, like, you hear someone step, step, step. Then you hear, oh. And then he does the lightsaber, and I'm like, holy shit! And it makes... Nergasm! Yeah, (laughs) to see Darth Vader make his appearance. Yeah, and it makes the original Star Wars, when you watch it, so much better. Because at first, you just see Darth Vader, and the door opens, and you're just standing there really intimidating. Now you know that literally five minutes before the first scene, he just slayed a bunch of dudes. He was using the force, throwing boys on the ceiling. He was blocking blocking the bullets, hitting Mm -hmm. the bullets like a baseball right back at him. He was slicing them with the lightsaber. And then some guy's like, the door is stuck or something. He's like hanging around. He's like, take it, take it. And then like you see the lightsaber come through the door. He like the floppy disk, if you will. (laughs) It's kind of funny how it's a floppy disk. Yeah, exactly. To somebody. And right as he's like sticking his hand through this crack in the door to give it to somebody else, he gets stabbed with the lightsaber. And then the person on the other side of the door grabs the floppy disk and and runs away with right. it to save the day. But yeah, so now it makes a new hope. The original Star Wars from the it connects it all. Yeah, it makes that even more intimidating. You're like, wow! Not only does Darth Vader look really pissed off and really intimidating, he just killed like ten guys single. Right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then um, they had the. <laughs> The Leia, whatever you want to call that, because it wasn't her, but it was like... Oh, Carrie Fisher. Carrie. Yeah, they made... It well, because was... she wasn't dead at that point, though, was well, she? She wasn't dead, but she looked a lot old. She did not look like... She oh, didn't she look did like Leia, yeah. But yeah, they make Carrie Fisher look like she is... Like Leia. ...in the original right. Star Wars. And she only has one brief scene, and she even said... She, like, drops the... Did that thing, like, oh, they said the name of the movie in the movie. They're like, Princess Leia, what is this disc that you found? And she looks at the camera and goes... It's a new hope. Ah! Which, which, yeah, <laughs> everyone and goes crazy. Same with Peter Cushing; he's been dead for like eighteen years. Right? Yeah, the guy, the old, um, the old Grand captain. Tarkin. Yeah, yeah. The Grand Moff Tarkin. He's like the the general of the Death Star. Right. He, he like commands the whole Death Star. He has a lot of scenes in it, and it's like a digital version. They have some random actor who looks kind of like him, and digitally they make it look just like Peter Cushing did when he was in school. right I was, I was just gonna bring that up too like that's the one thing about reboots that's an issue like if you have old characters you gotta either like, re- recast them but now they're trying to do that digital thing i don't know there's such a mix cgi of is I think what yeah some people were really impressed with the cgi like whoa how'd they get carrie fisher to look that young whoa how'd they make how'd mm-hmm. they get peter but Christian? if you know um cgi you know that it was you yeah, knew it's then, C- but then you know the, it's cgi on the other end some people were like oh my god that looks so awful i feel like i'm playing a ps2 game of peter cushion and hey, don't and, hit the um, ps2 man <laughs> i'm not knocking that oh just yeah saying some people it was weird some people were either real impressed with carrie fisher and peter yeah. cushion coming back in, in cgi or some people were disgusted at how bad they thought it was. right so yeah. it's, it was weird you know it's it's just weird to know um that PS2 your first system, or did you have one no, before? No, N64. So N64, okay. And then mine PS2, was... And that's it. Mine was a Game Boy. I don't know if that counts, uh, okay. but... okay. Yeah, I don't know if Game Boy counts. I did have a Game Boy Color. But if we do, like, a full-out console, it'd be the PS2 that I had. Actually, it's ironic. Uh-huh. I still have... I have oh, <laughs> Upstairs, I have a PS2, a PS3, and a PS4. Oh, you got all three yeah, generations. Yeah, Very nice. But, well, the PS3 I bought in college... 
the PS2 I got for Christmas when I was younger, and the PS4 Melanie bought me for Christmas. Oh, well, she, she we always she always jokes. She's like, oh, I bought it for us. Uh, <laughs> so she, <laughs> but oh, but, do you guys play together? Yeah, we play. Oh, um, the, our big thing is like Lego games. Like oh, we have nice. um, those are challenging. You think like, oh, this is a kids game. Those well, are hard as fuck. Well, yeah, the twenty five percent of the game is a story. <laughs> the other seventy five percent is all the other crap you and gotta it's, do. It's mostly you trying to figure out like, oh man, I gotta go all the way back. And there's just, like this one little piece on the ground. I gotta pick that up. Run into the other room. Plug that in that room. Run into the, like the <laughs> third room. Climb right. the stairs. The most... Talk to the guy. Run back down the stairs. Pull that piece out of this piece. Run into right. the other thing. It's like such a puzzle. You know, it's a it's exactly. a crazy. It's a scavenger hunt and a puzzle. Right. You think, are kids games but lego video games are really challenging really challenging yeah and i find myself googling like the walkthrough on certain cheat, things and you gotta be like because all right somebody explain to me what the hell do i well, do here? and, which, stuck and just for all our forever. fans the one guy with potato chips and dip by the way i hope that tastes good um it's like yeah you, you do do a good effort and like yeah nice smile i thought it was pretty funny <laughs> it was a stupid I joke i was trying you to could... figure out what you meant i meant now, our one fan it. that watches right, your these one things. fan is likely eating chips, chips and dip, and dip. Okay. yeah chips and dip in a beer what's wrong with that uh, no, exactly. <laughs> but um yeah so um you got to give an honest effort you can't just go right to the cheat codes you got to give an honest effort in the levels and everything like that right and, and then once you can't resort, yeah once you're like what the hell right because our famous games that we play together are lego harry potters which are oh, that's, seven that's of those so that's of real... course yeah there's like we're both fans movie. of games that are like super long like it takes okay. a long like the story's no, a long good. the story's yeah. a big part but then there's more to do than just the story. Okay, so there's a lot of replay value. Right, there's exactly. Side quests, side missions. That's why the Lego games are really cool. Right, because there's Lego millions Harry, of those. Yeah, Lego Harry Potter. Good. Jurassic Park, all four oh, of the movies. So that's, that's another cool. one. And then there's a game called Lego City. It's not a, it's not a movie or anything like that. It's just where you're a cop and you're going through and trying oh, to solve a crime. Oh, really? So, yeah, and then there's um, there's all the levels, but then there's a huge city you can drive around to and do, like, uh, it's little like a, tasks and stuff like that. It's like a sandbox game where it's just the whole city is just one giant level. It's all kind of things are happening that you're not even controlling. Right, yeah. It's, like, that's there's people cool. driving and stuff like that. Oh, that's really and, neat. Um, I'm I trying to think of it, like I'm trying to think of any other. Uh, Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, Lego Star Wars. Wow. The so Star Wars is a star. Any great adventure movie franchise they have made legos of and they've yes. also made a lego video lego of. star wars is way super challenging there's six yeah. levels per movie i got to like the third level i was like i was still young luke with old obi-wan and i was like <laughs> what the frick do i do what do i do i got stuck well, in the, the desert almost, he's the like only, the use old... the false luke and i'm like i'm trying i don't have weed yeah what do i do <laughs> but yeah so we do those um a lot of sports games like the maddens the uh, oh, okay. hockey games we play Although well, those have kind of tailed off, um, and then, ironically, you remember the Sly Cooper games? Oh, I, I still haven't gotten her to play them though. Like oh, I've been really? trying to push that her to do them because a it's game, a it's man. not it's a, it's not a two player game, but right. I've been pushing like she loves the story games. I'm like it's you got it, you got to try it. If you don't like it, you don't like awesome, it. But those awesome games are story. awesome. You I yeah, you introduced in those to yes, me. Yes, I'm madly in love with. And those I bought games. actually with the PS3, I bought. Oh, um, they had like a pack. They remastered them. They remastered them. How is it remastered? Because sometimes it I just like looks better. They, there really right. isn't. There really isn't like much, much difference. It just, it, it it just, just looks so the much better. Don't have those weird like sharp edges every once. Right. Time. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. They just did that with Crash Bandicoot as well. Were you a fan of the Crash Bandicoot? Games? Yes, I had one PS2 game. It was actually that and NHL Hits 2003 were my first two ah. ever games besides Pokemon. Okay. Which I mean, oh, you can't see. We're not. You're doing wearing a Charmander over. shirt. Uh, no, no, it's actually. What is it? Sl uh, swollen Mander. Swole Mander. Swole Mander. So he could Okay, swole. so it's, it's Charmander, <laughs> but he's got some fine Which is, biceps. He's right. got a dumbbell in one hand. Well, these were like 10 bucks a piece, and I, I, I was Where? online. I, they're called T and T. A T and T, so they're tiny <laughs> and T's. Or something. I don't know. I just found the website, and I was like, screw it. I'm buying four T shirts. I think they're awesome. And they're actually muscle shirts, but like. Um, so before Pokemon, or not counting Pokemon, my first two games were Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex, which, if you play it now, it's really bad graphics, oh, like, compared. Yeah. And then NHL Hits 2003, which is another game where it's, like, bad graphics. But it was those games are so enjoyable. And the famous yes, game. The, I know my, they just re-released the first three for PS1 on Right, they PS4, didn't, they didn't, they didn't, really cool. they didn't do the one I did, which is what I was right. looking for. Like, but the because it, it's the original, they wanted to do the start with the PS1 correct. ones, right. and, and I think it's super popular. Oh, extremely, yeah, because there's so many nostalgia. Like, like they're that's what exactly. everyone's doing. Nostalgia All these reboots themselves. of games are nostalgia because they exactly. can't come up with new games. And they know even if they did come up with a new game, there's a risk people might be like, oh, I don't really know how that goes. I don't know if I want to buy it. And right, something that they remember. 
immediately they'll be like, I'm buying this. I'm so buying this, right. always sells. People will buy what they're familiar with. Exactly. So those those are the first two. And then the my favorite, although all-time favorite one-player game, God of War series. You ever played uh, any of those? You know, I've watched people play. It looks really interesting. It, Especially, it, it's based on real, like, Roman real, mythology. Well, it's Greek, Greek, mythology. Oh, Greek mythology. So okay. whether it happened or not is beyond me. But, but I mean, it's not, like, real the stories. stories yeah, of, from the Roman archives. Exactly. And Greek those Greek. are Very just cool. so much fun. And they there's look really challenging. God of War. Too. Yeah, there's three main games. Then there's two, like, Pre games, I guess, like pre before the original story. Cool yeah, game. and so and it's just so they are so much fun. They're challenging. They're not super easy, which is part of the. It's just like what part of the thing is like you want to be able to complete them. Like you don't want them to be so difficult that you're like, oh, screw it, I'm not going to play this anymore. So it's like, and honestly, I never find myself going back to the sports games. I never find myself buying the newer ones, anyways. Yeah, like I, never I got, got my one. hockey game, I got my football right, game. Yeah, I, I never don't need anything got else. The people who are so insanely loyal, they would buy essentially the same game every single year with a couple upgrades to it. A couple upgrades, and they pay like seventy bucks a year. Oh yeah, how much it costs? Definitely for the same game. For the same, for the same game. Although, oh, yeah, instead yeah. of hitting, instead of X being a receiver, it's now the hike ball. Like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> certain silly right. things. Now, I understand. Like every couple of years, do it when like the rosters are a lot different. When when there's like a really they even have the updates though to keep that yeah, going. Yeah, now so. they, you don't even. There's even less incentive to do it, but kids still do it. Man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah, definitely crazy. I've been in the game system since PS2. I just kind of lost interest in gaming, but yeah. I play video games kind of two times a year, like Thanksgiving weekend, because I'm back at my parents' house and I have my old N64. Nostalgia. And my old Nostalgia. Surprised you didn't bring it with you. Surprised you didn't take the Nintendo 64 uh, yeah, with you. Yeah, a lot of people are like, "Why? Oh, you don't game at your apartment? Why? I just don't have the urge to game unless I'm in a nostalgic mood, which Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving weekend, and Christmas, Christmas weekend. Yeah, when I was gonna when say. I'm back at my parents' house, I yeah. fire up the old system. You so stay there or do you just go visit? Yeah, I usually then... stay there for the weekend. You know, They like to see me. You know, Not that I live <laughs> well, far. I, I would mean, hope they I would like to see you. I moved from South you. Buffalo to North Buffalo. North Buffalo <laughs> yeah. not very and I far, moved from but... South Buffalo to West Seneca, so it's yeah, really not. closer. Right, like yeah. Would you, and now. I think, um, I don't know how much time we've done, but I'll, we'll, we'll end on this. Would Can you move away from here? Like, if you got the right opportunity, no, money's not a question. Let's just say it's out. You got everything. You can afford everything. Would you, Emotionally, would you be able to? I think Melanie's home, but anyways. <laughs> but yeah. um, would uh, you be able to move away from Buffalo, yeah, New York? Yes, so you know nobody loves Buffalo and defends Buffalo as, as adamantly as me and as passionately as, as Us me. Too, yeah. <laughs> but um, I think I could, and I think I, I will need to soon. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with the uh, I could move away. It'd be difficult. I mean, I'm not saying it would be easy because, mm. I mean. Uh, I mean, it is something your your wife is not from here, but now she's made a home she, here. Right, she's from Corning, but she came. She was went to school in Buffalo, so she's right, done that so transition. She's adopted a new city. But right. We but, haven't done that yet. We went to college. We dormed in our colleges, but right. it's still in the same area code. Same. But I think, w- I think with the right job and the right situation, I think I could move away from okay. Buffalo. Even – I like and if I would, I'd have to move to somewhere that where it's not like Buffalo. Like I need a whole new, a whole like brand new South South, South United okay. States. I would think so new climate, new everything. Yeah, I think so. Because like cool. South North Carolina, like that that type of uh, like maybe that. not that close to the ocean because <laughs> I've seen what okay, happens there. The South kind of yeah. Like my over? cousin went from Colorado to Tennessee. My cousin AJ went from okay. Colorado to Tennessee, and um. And and like that would be somewhere I would think, but honestly, until you get the, until you have a job, like just moving until somewhere. Until something's lined up. Right. right exactly. Yeah. Do, do you have a dream city, dream location? You seem to dream be pretty s- big on the the new south, but like if you could live anywhere, I think Florida. I think some. Florida. I would have to. The only thing I don't like about it is the humidity. Everything else I absolutely love about huh. Florida. What, we went to Disney. Any city, uh, to Orlando, you're thinking? Orlando area. Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah. that's the like they say the city of Miami, <laughs> like. A little bit above city, like I don't want to be right at the tip of, right like, in down. southern Florida, like right? Like Miami maybe area. mid Florida okay. somewhere. Like, I don't know where right. Orlando is, but yeah, to be no, honest, yeah, it's the only one I know: Orlando, Orlando. Miami, uh, Jacksonville. Like Orlando, the, uh, I love you, Orlando you ever, Magic. Well, you ever Orlando. See? Another Book of by Mormon? the was, was that Book of Mormons the writer. No, of I've never Park. seen. Never oh, seen. Oh, they it. wrote a musical, and one of the first songs is the Mormons first think they're going to be stationed in Orlando, and they sing a song. <laughs> Orlando, I love. love. You're like, oh, did we say Orlando? We meant Uganda, Africa, <laughs> and they're like, shit. <laughs> shit. And then the whole musical is about. How about them. you? Dream oh, City. Dream City. I do love New York so much, but mm-hmm. it um. 
I feel like I would like maybe better weather. I was spent a lot of time in Los Angeles this summer because my girlfriend had an internship um, right. with uh, Warner Brothers and that, and that's where she really wants to go once we have the money. Nah, what's graduate. up, Doc? So yeah, possibly I will be a Los Angelian. Well, I'm wearing go Do- the Dodgers won last night. First right, game of the World Justin Series. Turner, wearing, former Bison, yes, hit a home run. He looks like a holy mammoth. He's got the monster beard. He's got beard. the giant red beard. Yeah, yeah. It's so hard bison. to believe that he's a former Bison. Yeah, because the yep. the famous one I always remember was Coco Crisp. Yep. Until yeah, when, Justin Turner, when Coco was a Bison. Yep. Yeah, until Justin Turner. So yeah, I, I mean LA is funny. Like. I feel like there's a natural disaster or a natural fire disaster like every year. There's wildfires in the rural parts. Right. Like so yeah. it, honestly, it's like the only. I mean, this is where this is where moving away from Buffalo would get difficult. It would uh-huh. be like snow. That's the worst thing to happen here is snow. Yeah. Like which you'd have to get used to a whole new. What is the worst things that can happen? Right. Here. I mean, there's right. hurricane in Florida, for instance. There's hurricanes. There are, there's hurricanes is a big deal. Hurricanes is a huge deal. I mean, look what just happened this past. Year. To Houston and right, Puerto Houston Rico, and yeah. Puerto Rico, and um, I know what happened to Florida. Was it was in Miami though? Was it? Oh right, I don't remember. Well, I know Florida. it was at parts of southern Florida. Yeah, right. I don't so know Florida got hit. I just don't remember um where. But yeah, so that see, like that's a consideration. Like that's why I was thinking maybe somewhere a little bit north of Florida, like okay. uh. Uh, like somewhere in Georgia, like, maybe a little bit inward. Right. Atlanta's like, a up and a little bit of yeah. Atlanta's a little more inward, like uh, right. in, uh, Kentucky, Nashville, like, Tennessee is a right. very right or Midwest. State. I don't know why. What about the Midwest? Uh, but it feel like a Detroit. I don't know why. I know it's like one of the worst cities in the world to live coming, in. The downtown it's, area is coming back. I was right. there this time last year, and it's actually really nice. Like stay out of the outer parts of the city, like Eight Mile, the East Side, that stuff. That's the hood, and that is a bad area, but. Right, downtown Detroit, midtown Detroit, very right. nice places. I, I think anywhere you go, you're gonna have just have to get well, used to gonna it. Be bad there's parts gonna be of everywhere. well, no, I'm, there's that, but then there's also like just the emotional. You have to get used to it, no matter what. Yep. Like if me, like me and Melanie, if we were to move out of state, we would be both doing the okay. same exact thing because yeah, Melanie moved from Corning to Buffalo, but she's never moved out of state. Out of state, right? Which I've never moved out of state either. The, yeah, exactly. Okay. So it would both be an adjustment, and we both be doing it together, which. It, it, which is encouraging. Like if we were, if you're, you're married to someone and they both are going through the same thing, it's easier to we know someone, someone else is going else, through the same thing yeah, you are. Exactly. Yeah. Well, somebody and to confide in. What's great about what I do is that you can do this anywhere. Like, okay, maybe not me and you doing the podcast. But like, we we could do a phone call instead of right. going to meet each other. Like, this is like what I do can be done anywhere. Like having the basement or having the production yeah. studio can be done anywhere. So that's not going to hinder me saying, Oh, I can't go anywhere because this is where the only place I can do this. It's like, no, you can do this anywhere. So, all right, we're going to end on, can we move away from Buffalo? We both have said, yes, that does not mean we hate Buffalo, but we definitely could both do it. If the situation was correct, this has been at random Trevor Duke and Alec and Turpy. Facebook's the only social media page we got going at the moment. Hopefully we get other ones going again. Look for these posts randomly. Have a good day, everybody.